we're going to start with the Chicago Red Stars. They uh, made an additional announcement on their head coaching update. Lisa, we actually touched on this a little bit not too long ago in one of our episodes, a few episodes back, uh, discussing sort of this timeline uh, for the Red Stars and what was going on with their uh, head coaching search, what possibly could be going on with their head coaching search. And uh, just to sort of put a timeline on it for everyone just joining us today, uh, December 13th, the Red Stars announcing that they were, uh, you know, conducting an ongoing search for a new head coach and that it was their goal to have uh, to announce a new head coach in January of 2022. And then on Friday, January the 28th, the Chicago Red Stars uh, released an additional announcement uh, a coaching search update that basically there is no update uh, and that the search for a head coach will actually continue for them uh, into the NWSL preseason that uh, Rade uh, Taniskosovic will still be carrying the label of acting head coach uh, alongside assistant coaches Julianne Stitch and Fabrice Gatra, who has been with the club for the last two years, and I guess will be joining this coaching staff as it's assembled in a sort of official capacity right now. Uh, and it's just uh, it's unfortunate they, they reemphasize what uh, the coaching committee looks like. They assemble the committee to try to go out there and get a new head coach, and it consists of 11 current and former Red Stars players, three assistant coaches, a sports psychologist, the club's chief business officer, Vicki Lynch, and other members of the club's ownership. So, um, yeah, not a lot going on there in terms of what we were possibly anticipating from Chicago. Again, it's it's like we're just sort of rehashing this again on this episode, and it was similar to what we were chatting a little bit about on our previous episode, that there wasn't uh, a lot there in terms of attaching, um, you know, a new head coach for for this team, Lisa. Chicago gave themselves this deadline in early December that they would have a coach by January 2022. They made that public information. They put out that statement. They put out that release. Uh, they did that to themselves. I mean, January 2022 isn't an unrealistic expectation considering preseason is set to start on February 1st. So you would think you would need a head coach by then. However, Chicago, they couldn't meet their own deadline, right? Like maybe they overestimated the coaching candidates or they underestimated how tricky it would be to find someone. I'm not really sure. I'm not in those meetings and I'm not on the committee, but it seems like poor planning and poor judgment from Chicago at that point to kind of throw themselves under the bus, say, hey, we'll have an announcement. We're going to have a head coach, everyone. We're doing the search and, and here's our deadline. And then to say, listen, we haven't found it yet. We're pushing back our deadline into preseason. Um, it's almost like the story that keeps developing with no story <laughs> because there is no head coach and there's no story. It's just that Chicago still has a bunch of question marks around them. And if they want assistant coaches and and acting head coaches to be the head coach, I feel like that would have already happened. So that doesn't seem like the case. And if that announcement does come out later in, in February throughout the NWSL preseason, that would be very surprising because why not make that decision or come to that conclusion earlier or were there no other candidates to take the position? It's just like an odd, sticky situation that, Chicago is in and now Chicago fan bases and Chicago players are confused about. And then, so when Chicago does name a head coach, they have to come into a team that's already been competing throughout preseason, right? Like that's a chance for a new head coach to come in and really get a clean slate and set the tone and the foundation of what they want to do at a club. But if preseason's already started, that's a little bit hard to do to change things. And it's, you still have the entire season ahead of you of matches to play. It's not like a, a lot of coaches we saw in the 2021 season coming in in the middle of the season. So it's kind of like, all right, pick up the pieces of the last few months and just get to the finish line at the end of the season, which we saw what, like seven clubs do that throughout this regular yeah. season. So it is possible, but it, it's just odd to come in during preseason and to not have a coach already at this point. And as we mentioned, when we did talk about the schedule coming out, there are CBA negotiations. There are other things that league offices are 
hopefully focused on, right? Like getting a deal with the NWSL Players Association to sign a contract with a CBA for the players so that they do report on February 1st. And this seems like a Chicago club franchise conversation and discussion about their head coach. Uh, and yes, there's investigations that happen and and you have to do background checks that might involve the league, but like, do we need to hire more people here? I'm just a little bit confused on this. I mean, yeah, I think it goes without saying that uh, every club in, in the league probably has to hire uh, more people. I don't think that that's uh, uh, breaking news uh, on that. Is in and the league. Of, and yeah, the in, league. Terms of a, in terms of a league that's, you know, just about to hit a decade years old that's still, you know, kind of considered in its growing phases. I mean, the front offices need to expand, right? Uh, but in terms of, I think we're watching that sort of unfold with this with Chicago, uh, you know, just sort of having almost what 60 or 70 days to find a head coach and, and still needing a bit more time um, for that. And in terms of everything outside of, of the front uh, office or at the administration level, in terms of this search, um, the reporting that was put out there that perhaps there was a candidate in place and somebody like Omid uh, Namazi, uh, other reports saying that perhaps that there was a head coach that was tabbed on the European side of the game. But unfortunately, things fell through with that. So now you're just adding additional I don't know if you want to call it uh, mystery around uh, potentially uh, seeking out a new head coach. And I think even with those type of things swirling around the possibility of either of these candidates uh, being tied to the club as head coach, you go back to this release, this update, this, co this head coach search and, and saying that, you know, while we have spoken with multiple highly qualified coaches, we've yet to find the candidate that our players deserve and uh it just sort of reads a little bit unnecessarily to me mm -hmm. uh, that it's not that's not something that you maybe need to add into a release like this considering the rumors that are attached to the club is that there are candidates potentially in place so then what does that say about these potential candidates that are rumored to be connected to your club are they currently not <laughs> uh the coaching candidates that are deserving to you know be in that position it's it's just uh yeah again i'll just leave it at that like uh, it just reads unnecessarily to me but i think and that that's been a theme in a lot of chicago's off season that in all of these releases that have sort of not had uh a direct uh you know person to point to in terms of direction and comment for the club uh, that there's been a lot of unnecessary uh, type of, of phrasing within some of these releases and that includes this current update as well. I mean even if you're a coach that applied to this job or you interviewed or you wanted yeah. to be this head coach and you read this statement and it's like so we still don't have a coach none of our <laughs> candidates were good enough like yeah it's like, that's 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 like you're reading that and you're like that sucks like thanks yeah. um it's not like we found someone better we're gonna go in a different direction it's like yeah. we actually didn't yeah. find anyone better than you yeah. you're just not good enough yeah thanks for uh speaking with us uh, as we have stated earlier in this release we spoke to multiple candidates <laughs> None of you are deserving. We're all of bad. This position. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's not it's not great. Yeah. So it's just uh yeah, it's it's unfortunate. And uh, there is still one club that is gonna be heading into their preseason um, you know, without a new uh, head coach or at least just the the same coaching staff in place uh, adjacent to this search mm -hmm. that has been ongoing. For, for 70 days. And it's unfortunate because we can even take a little step further for Chicago and sort of say that before they, you know, before they made this announcement, um, they, they made an announcement about an addition to their staff and they appointed a former Chicago Red Stars player, Michelle Lomnicki as the club's associate general manager. And she is a, uh, a player. Uh, she's a person who's been affiliated with the Chicago Red Stars for a very, very long time. She started her pro career in Chicago with the Red Stars in the WPSL in 2009, uh, you know, and then actually played overseas at one point, played a little bit with Sky Blue FC, returned to Chicago from 2012 to 2015. So very much someone who was a part of those very early days of NWSL, right? Which I think people who are perhaps finding themselves new to the league are discovering that it was some very tough times, some very uh, stark growing pains, right? In those early years. Um, and uh, something that was of, of most interest for, for me as someone who's kind of club uh, followed the club on a local level for quite some time is, is the fact that this title 
uh, that this position was sort of crafted and then developed and made uh, for somebody like a Lomniki to come in and uh, fill in and fill the role for. Because as, as far as the NWSL history of this club, uh, something like a general manager has sort of been a dual title for their head coach. So obviously for the last decade, that was somebody in Rory Dames who was navigating the, the scouting, the recruiting, uh, and the building and fleshing out of a team alongside head coaching responsibilities. And in terms of an associate general manager, an official uh, role that has been uh, developed, this is the first of its kind for this club. So, uh, you know, she's someone who, uh, along with having that playing experience with the team, has been attached to this franchise in terms of the youth soccer programs in Chicago, uh, was uh, appointed director of the Red Stars uh, camps and clinics. So um, closely tied to, to the youth academies there. And this hire just sort of goes right in line with something that we're seeing across the league already in terms of seeing former players in these types of positions. It does. And I think this is a, a great hire for Chicago because as a player who um, not only competed in the league and at the professional level and overseas, having a lot of experience as a player, but with this club specifically and spent time there as a player um, understanding the ins and outs of it from that perspective, and then continue to stay involved with that club specifically. So she saw really the change in the club over the last few years, and especially throughout the 2021 season and everything that happened with former head coach Rory Dames and how all of that was uncovered and he went under investigation. So to have that perspective from a player's standpoint, uh, formerly, then as someone involved in the youth side of the game in the club to now really take on a front office leadership role as a GM. I mean, that's huge. And she already, they, they re said in the statement, Chicago said that she's already been in this role um, since during the draft, because again, they didn't have a head coach. So they needed to rely on a lot of people in the front office to help. So um, Michelle helped with the draft. She helped with different player contract discussions. She helped bring Yuki Nagasato back from Louisville to Chicago Red Stars. And Sandra, as you mentioned, this is a common theme across the league and across many different clubs. Michelle now becomes the fourth player to be named an NWSL club general manager. We had Karina LeBlanc happening earlier this year, Yale Averbush West at Gotham, uh, Karina at the Thorns, Cami Levin at Kansas City, and now in Chicago, former player stepping into that GM role. So there are good things happening um, at Chicago. And I think we need to remember that Chicago is a very good soccer club. They have made the NWSL playoffs for six consecutive years, including making it to the NWSL championship in 2021. So they have good players. They have good bones. They have a good city around them supporting them. And they're getting the pieces together in the front office, specifically uh, hiring a, a general manager like this, but still waiting for that final piece of the head coach. But I mean, it seems like a, a good place to go as a coach if you're looking for a highly competitive team with good support from the front office uh, and players that frankly are very, very good on the pitch. Um, but yeah. I think that this hire of a GM is going to, do a lot for the players in this club specifically. And with all of the fights that have been happening in the league with the CBA, this is a good, a good role for her to have. Yeah, I agree. I think, I think the title is um, probably limiting what her role is actually going to be within the club. And especially now in light of knowing that this head coaching search is still ongoing, that preseason could uh, happen you know, without a head coach, they're likely probably going to rely on her pretty heavily uh, in all this. And it's just sort of, uh, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm in agreement with you. As many, I guess, looking at the pros and cons, as many cons as you can maybe look at sort of this process for Chicago, there's these other pros that we're picking out. And um, it almost looks as if a staff is being built up around uh, this position it's just a matter of who and when and if that head coaching uh role is going to be uh, fulfilled and um yeah they'll be inheriting uh i think i refer to it as what a top four midfield in the league right several u.s women's national team star players um 
and uh, a team that uh, already has familiarity with each other, right? So that's a thing that uh, this team maybe doesn't have to worry so much about heading into a preseason. They're they're a, a team with a core group of players that have mostly been together for for a while, um, and we'll see what happens. It's something that we're it's a, just another thing that we're going to have to keep our eye on that is uh, not officially taken care of or tied up just yet. Uh, but it's not Chicago, uh, the only team making moves or announcing lack thereof. We are going to get through some more teams right after a quick break. <laughs> 